मैं क्या लोग आए ऑफ यहाँ वे ले ले उन्हें लो ही इस ऑलवेज आलाव एंड पावरफुल शार्प और देने नी टू एजेंट स्वॉर्ड पीयरसिंग इवेंट टू द डिवाइडिंग असंडर ऑफ द सोल एंड द स्पिरिट एंड द जॉइंट्स एंड द मार्ब्रो एंड इट इज अ क्रिटिक ऑफ थॉट्स एंड इंटेंस ऑफ द हार्ट ऑल स्क्रिप्चर इज कैप्रीड � that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a brood unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible and inerrant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be to the mankind of this earth. Those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them. I love to walk day by day, breath by breath. The nurturing of the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. By waking up to realize the true calling in the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, walking worthy for it. Not being entangled into the yoke of bondage of sin able to realize the true life in Christ for which you and I have been kept alive in this church age. This great unique spiritual life demands nothing but doctrine. Being in the fellowship of that God the Holy Spirit alone. Therefore Hebrews 8.10 gives for us a great warning that he's going to inculcate in us the word. And furthermore he's going to write his word upon our hearts. That great inculcation demands our complete obedience and subjection to the Lord's mind and the Lord's will. This great inculcation demands the Lord's truth. That we love Him in spirit, in truth. And we love Him in soul of the truth. And we love Him in all subjection of the flesh, in truth. Such great Lord of a God says for us, Today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Make up your number one priority to know the truth, to learn the truth. Make up your constant affirmation to realize that if it is not truth, then there is nothing on this earth that you could rejoice. The source of truth, the origin of the truth, is none other but my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His truth is what he says for us, those who love my Lord in sincerity, the great apothesia, which calls undecaying existence, no corruptibility in it. The things that we are going to learn, which says for us immortality. These great things wherewith you and I have been given, this great unique dispensation of the church age to realize that we should love him in sincerity. And the great grace of the Lord our God be with them in their spirit who love my Lord in sincerity, demanding nothing but the truth. How many people are constantly being perished without knowing there should be a proper revolution of the word of the Lord of our God in their lives. Asking everything and anything contrary to the will of God. Expecting something great when they ask contrary to the will of God. Agonizing, weeping, wailing. And thinking in all mannerisms which is quite contrary to the mind of Christ. The reasons behind this, if you could come back and look in the Bible, it says for us, you haven't loved my Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your spirit. If you would have loved my Lord, you would have known what are his commandments. The occasion which has been demanding today in our pulpits, the greater the way that you think that you could fulfill all the mannerism of this flesh by the activities of your roles in nature and call it as divine is absolutely wrong. But 
the word of the lord of god demands not an emotional fear but he wants those men who will be taking into godly fear all the time the godly fear of love and that's what many people today in the church age have lost their track they haven't realized what is the true godly fear in my christ they are happy performing those things which they think they have done is great but they haven't truly understood the great fear in the lord dear brethren the things that we are talking about the things that we are looking about demands at the present moment not to lose the time in the night times it demands for us to purchase the time even in the night times by the time in veiling as joel 1:13 and 14 teaches has coming back to lamentations 2:19 which quotes for us because of the great destruction that happened to the chosen field of the lord the prophets of that time should come and veil all night wearing sackcloth but that we mean not letting go the time in the night and as psalms 11 goes on to quote day and night meditate upon the lord's mind day and night be inculcated in the lord's truth so it is for us much more so that we could think weekly once is enough rather than realizing daily we have to learn the word of the lord of god it is no longer weekly ones it is every day every day every day and above all not just every day day and night morning one hour evening one hour my introduction to this topic will be the night redeeming moments to the lord it is not that that we sleep for a long time we sleep and rest for a long health we sleep and not get slumbered enough but we are being the children of light and since we are being the children of light our time is to redeem as many as we can those moments in the night time as well to the praise of his glory when the prophets fail to expose their sins gala their sins but that we mean a stark exposition they failed the process of which they have been called to be called as nagab which teaches for us without their proper revolution without their proper teaching the people would perish that's the word meant to say nagab people fail to nagab this people fail to expose and the failure of them cost to pay lamentations 2:19 it called them to lament all night not the lamentation of disbelief what we look in numbers and the reconnaissance crowd went back and brought the report lamentations what apostle paul what jeremiah writes for us in teaching how beautiful they were to the lord's glory and have you got now in such kind of a situation where the people are calling you how and calling them to lament and wake up and come back to the reality of the truth and realize how to put back again the foundation to the pulpit the same point what we are making it to learn every day to put back in our foundations or in our pulpits the foundation of the original languages of the scriptures once again to train them up in the lord's mind every day once again to deal with them in sincerity so that we could be in return 
getting that glory which is due unto the Lord our God, which has been hidden before the foundation of the world, which Christ our Lord our God claimed before God the Father and was received. And in claiming that, substituting us, that we shall keep your word. Therefore he sanctified himself and kept apart by the truth. And as the way how apostolas he was been sent, so he's sending us. That's how again we are apostolas. It's not only just to conform to the image of his dear beloved son, though we have been predestined to conform to his image. It's to be like Christ, catharism one process. That's what, what we are reading in Ephesians 4.13. And that catharism one process calls for us that already the process of your perfection has been completed and you have to go into progress of it. And for that reason, 2 Corinthians 13, 8 and 9 tells for us, this is what we pray, your perfection. The catharism one process, the catharsis process. And the KJV it calls very greatly to realize that is what we wish. But in the Greek it says, not wish, but this is what we pray. Your perfection, the great catharsis process, the great catharismon process, the catharsis process needed to achieve the catharismon result. This great catharsis process, where you have been called to carry up your cross every day and follow Him, moving to perfection, getting into perfection. So that we are not by men neither by men what we have read the two propositions app and diagnosis de app in relations what the people are from great grandfather to father from father to son and from son to the great grandson that's app that's been concerned to the relations, in concern to the sacraments, in concern to the sacrifice, in concern to your suppression. And the other one, DE, in concern to the diagnosis. Where diagnosis goes on to tell the various denominations being resulted of that diagnosis. Some call that he is such and such, the way how they were in First Corinthians. Chapter 3. Some said he is of Apollo, some said he is of such, of Paul, some said he is of such, of Peter. But Paul comes to realize that and teach them so their mind could realize we all are one in Christ. Some plants, some grows, and some, it, some, some plants and some waters, it is the result of the Lord of God to grow it up. But how he says again, Homo tu medan, one mind, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Worshipping that great Lord in one accord. And that one accord is nothing but John 4.24 as Christ our Lord our God exemplified for us to look. The hour is going to come where God the Father is seeking those true worshippers who shall worship my Lord in spirit and in biblical truth. The spirit referring back to the filling of the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And calling us for what? Biblical truth. Biblical truth. Aletheia. Because we are having the fruit of the Spirit of Light in us. Which goes on to tell Aletheia, Nikaya Sune, and Agathe Sune. And the same thing in 1 Corinthians 13, 6, what we have been read, it says, Love rejoices only in the truth. Aletheia. No other compromise for us. No matter how our great you may think. Lord of our God cannot go against his own standards. His standards are nothing but the truth in the Bible of the word of the Lord of our God. Therefore, he says in Deuteronomy 12, 32, nothing you shall add unto it and nothing you shall diminish from it. The same thing what he says in Jeremiah 26, 2, none of the words what I have spoken to you which shall not be diminished. The same thing he quotes back with Acts 20, 26 and 27 through Apostle Paul to teach for us that we have not shunned to declare to you the entire counsel of the Lord of our God, but everything we have thought, therefore you are having your, head up, your blood upon your own head signifying the mannerism of purity. How can we add some things? How can we delete some things which are of the essence of the Lord's mind? And how can we not worship the Lord of our God in spirit and in biblical truth? Therefore, diagnosis. This diagnosis according to the will of men. This diagnosis according to the will of sponsorship that they could get from their other so-called sponsors like the Church of Christ in India 
seven day Adventist churches in India. They want to go and say we are doing great work. And they forgot the great ministry should have been if ever you could ask. Not the Luther mission, not the Baptist mission. It would have been those great universities which have trained those men to become missionaries. By training them up in the version of language of the scriptures like Harvard, Dartmouth and Yale universities. You should have been those denominations, Yale denomination, Harvard denomination, or Harvard denomination, or Dartmouth denominations. They would have come to train only the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Because we cannot go against the truth. Neither we are able to do anything against the truth, dear brethren. We can do nothing. You may think, you may believe, you may realize those standards are not, but the Bible says we cannot do anything against the truth. We are not able to do by dunamis. And yet there are people who think they can do greater things against the Lord's mind. Do you know how far, how great they are in their own terms, in their own thinking, in their own religion? They would say, if Lord our God could come and ask us, we are there here to answer him back. They would say, we have all our alibis, we have all our excuses, we have all our reasonings. Your alibis, your excuses, your reasonings, rather than keeping them in your mind to answer back to the Lord our God, it would be better for you to humbly obey. And the solution would be just the knee space from the ground. Ask unto the Lord by kneeling down in his presence to send those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers for you who could reign upon you with knowledge and with understanding. Not to squeeze your wool, not to squeeze your meat, not to squeeze your blood. By the time in white blood, the milk. But in return, giving you the great truth of Lord's mind, laying down his soul. Whenever you come in and go out, what do you find? You find the pasture of the Lord's mind. And that's what many people are not able to realize, the pasture of Lord's truth. As such, they're entitled to think in the terms of this earth. According to their terms, they think they are feeding the Lord. But the word of the Lord of our God calls for us to feed them nothing but the truth. You know very well the translations are not the truth. If you haven't known that, know it. The inspired language of the scriptures of Theonostas comes from Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. This great Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic Every word in the terms of exegesis will change your life. Will change your life to believe that you shall crush Satan under your feet. Under your own feet. Shortly. Because Lord our God has reigned over it on the cross. Destroyed even the last enemy known as death in our lives. And for a true believer in the Lord our God, death is a promotion. And it's a great pleasure for us to be in the presence of the Lord of our God. And if we could realize like Paul what he says in Philippians 1, 20 and following. It is abiding for me to be staying in this flesh for your sake so that I could increase your joy in the grace of the Lord of our God by daily edifying you in the Lord's mind. It's abiding for me to be in this flesh for your sake. And not for anything else and nothing for anything else. But many people don't realize the true purpose in the Lord, why they have been kept still in this tabernacle. The tabernacle of Lord's mind, the tabernacle of Lord's glory, the tabernacle of Lord's will. This flesh that has been bestowed upon us is the property of the Lord's will. He designed us through the dust to be in such and such terms in the image of God. So that we could be not ashamed when we stand in his presence. To certainly knock down every demon, every fallen angel and prove 
what a great liberty it is for us to be in this flesh and the thorn which has been kept all the time for us including that tree in the garden of Eden which has been kept as a volition examination is the lustful patterns of the old sin nature when you are not walking in the fellowship of Adgar the Holy Spirit the great fellowship of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit which should be saying for us all the time if ever we live it should be in the mentoring ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit if ever we certainly walk not peripatao but the things pertaining to the marching mentoring ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit which is nothing but for his glory which says peripatao It should be only by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have been given that stoicon to live the true eternal life of Zao concept, the highest life, the best life, the true life, the only life given for the believers in the Lord who alone are eligible for such life. Many people don't even understand what is the true life in the Lord being bestowed for us in eternity past. They think the life, the needs of this earth are far greater for us to enjoy, to have kids, to have marriage, to make this, to make that. And you see what the Lord of our God says, here the riches will be eaten by moths. Store up your treasure in the heaven where there are neither robbers nor moths to eat it up. Does not the word say for us when the People came along to cross-check my lot to say she got married to seven brothers for whom she will be. And the word of the Lord of our God says they are neither given in marriage. All will be no need of progenitory requirements because you will be forever in the eternal life. The progeny has been gathered down to pass down one to another to prove. So the next generations as well, if we have not been alive through our kids, if our Lord of God wills that we should have some kids. They also should witness the truth. That's it. And when the term gets over, it will be passed on to the next generation. That's progeny. But Christ our Lord of God did not intend you for progeny. He created it for recreation. There he says for them, in the heaven neither been given in marriage nor will be taken in marriage all will be angels no need of marriages but he wants us to be right now in the church age to carry his image to move from glory to glory and to put constantly the number one priority in our lives being developed in the will of the Lord's mind being taken to realize the will of the Lord's mind and to form in you the character of Christ not just an angel though no matter how our great those angels may look the Lord of our God calls in Ezekiel chapter 28, Can you be wiser than Daniel? He's talking that to the Nagat, the governor of the land, of the kingdom of Tyros. But when he's coming from verse number 12, he's talking about the son of the morning star, the Lucifer, how it has been fallen down. And he further goes on to prove for us, to teach for us the reality, the reliability. How great we are in the church age. How great a wisdom we have been given in this church age. How great authority which has been laid on upon our shoulders in this church age. And the intent for every believer to wake up to such calling in the Lord. But we are still sleeping. The reasons may be many for you, 
But in the Lord's sight, the reason is only one thing, that you don't love Him. No matter how difficult it would be for a right woman towards a right man to do the things, because she loves Him, she takes it to do it, against her own nature, against her own body. And that's the true love, what we have to realize. If a husband doesn't insist upon the kids, she walks in his path to say what the things will be to love him. She sacrifices his life or her life for his sake if she truly loves him in all mannerisms, in all respects. And it's hard to find such a woman in our life. And such a woman is a great prize to her husband, crown of her head. Christ our Lord our God is searching and seeking such followers today. Therefore he says, if this hand hinders you, cut it off. If other continues for us to teach, if this leg hinders you, cut it off. If your eye hinders you, pluck it out. Nothing greater for you than the glory of the Lord our God, that the sufferings that you go through on this earth to be compared before that worthy of great eternal life. And how many of the people are not able to let go their roles in nature to reign over them by calling to put number one priority constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using the privacy of the priesthood. How many of the people are loving to put their tithe of the everyday time to the Lord's mind? Minimum three hours out of 24 hours given to you. How can you develop your rapport with the Lord of a God by neglecting His word? And that will be a very, very, very grievous pain and guilt in us when we stand in His presence. Like Enoch, the way he walked, he got married, he had children, yet he walked with the Lord of our God and pleased Lord God to take him back home. And that's a testimony of what he has left behind, says Hebrews Laman, that he has a testimony that has pleased the Lord. The point one I want to tell dear brethren, the out of 24 hours, the remaining 21 hours have been given for your life, the details of your life. And in that three hours, it demanding two hours, 26 minutes, or two hours, 40 minutes, or in fact, on a rough figure, three, three hours. That is your walk, that you should walk with the Lord of God. That's the privacy of your time towards my Christ. You cannot let it go so easily. You're robbing your time to give it to the Lord for some vague and vain reasonings on this earth. You are robbing in all manner of but you must seem now to be absolutely explanatory and satisfactory, but your every thought and motivation behind that, which our Lord of our God knows long back, He can get you to the mind to realize that how we can frail you were in reasonings of such reasonings thinking that the sufferings on this earth are far greater than the eternal glory of the eternal life in Christ. The reasons what you are telling for you to wake up and not to waste your time, but in return even use the time of your night times and redeem it, is because the nature is eagerly waiting and desiring to look upon the manifestation. <laughs> manifestation of the sons of God, by that we mean the adult sons of Christ. The Apocalyptus, the manifestations, so that he could expound and expose the image of Christ in you, through you. Forget about these miracles, forget about these healings, forget about these tongues. The temporary spiritual gifts being seized off. 
Look upon your calling in the Lord. Look upon your great reality in Christ. And how many days more yet you don't want to look that the nature is eagerly waiting for the great manifestation of those great sons of the Lord of a God in the church age. And yet there are people who don't want even to look the prototype burden given upon their shoulders. As Zechariah 6, 9-13 teaches to us that he shall be the future king and the future priest of glory, taking the two offices of the Lord's mind. He has given that for us in the church age, that we are kings and priests to the Lord. The same thing he says for us, the manifestation of the Son of God which has been given for us in 1 Peter. Now the sons of God to be manifested to this nature, to this world. So that we shall no longer stand in the counsel of ungodly. Walk in the paths of unrighteousness. Or sit among the seats of the scornful who disobey to become the apathias, the sons of disobedience. By their own will, by their own regression, by their own attitude. And many people think they are able to perform these things, they are able to perform that things, and they think they are happy with the Lord. The nature is awaiting for its deliverance by appearance of the manifestation of this great sons of God, of this great unique dispensational believers of this church age who have been given the pleasure of Paltima privileges of all time. Such a great calling of us is today in this church age. And it's unique. And the greater you love to blaspheme, this great will by not believing the Lord's will. And since we are here to give you no offense in anything, that our ministry may not be blamed. But in return, wherever we go, that the Lord's knowledge being shined through us, we stand boldly to teach the truth, no matter what the people think, no matter what the people love to listen it or not. Because we love our Lord. And the love of the Lord of a God rejoices in nothing but the truth. Love doesn't rejoice in iniquity, a wrongdoing. It rejoices in only nothing but the truth. And if you truly love my Lord, my rock, know the gala exposition of your sin. Get out from the captivity of captive and get into the real divine presence of the Lord's mind day by day in loving the truth, learning the truth, enjoying the truth all the days of this life. Dear brethren, we may think 70 to 80 years on this earth's journey is of a toilsome but for the one who is carrying his cross to do his will, the 70 to 80 years are nothing. Because he will not count them in the terms of years, he will count them in the terms of deeds. What he has achieved, how he has achieved, and what more is pending for him to get to achieve. Make up in your life at least to kneel down once and read the Bible. That will be a great achievement. Second time kneel down and write the Bible, that will be still greater achievement. The second time in the interlinear, the third time in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, continuing that till to write. Eleven times because it is the hand file of the Lord of our God, because he trains us up with his integrity, with the straightforwardness of his truth. 
and the 18th time when we were prayed in the Hebrew alphabet, kneeling down in his presence. And 22 times what we were looking to avoid, because it has to be inculcated at every facet of the soul of our body. So that we could come and learn and look and realize and understand what great calling it is in the Lord that we have been given this great value in the church age. And we could come to understand nothing on this earth is far greater and far more important for us than to be obedient to his will all the time than to be alert for his doing for his calling for his walking worthy no doubt you may be mindful of about things of about other things on this earth or not but you have to be mindful about the teachings which have been given for us in the church man is so cunning and so mindful about other things of the details of life the root cause being nothing but money for all they will and for that he develops tricks gimmicks and policies which he thinks it is great but when it comes in the presence of the Lord's mind they are not even worthy to be counted for anything and they think they can truly achieve by achieving their standards to produce the pros and cons asking the opposite believer to believe and to say to act in such mannerism as a testimony and record them put in the media so that the media could look so many people and many people could come to listen and think they are doing Lord's will very greatly very graciously all of these things are not right no matter whatever you think, these things are not at all right. Your gimmicks are cheap tricks for rising money. And that doesn't satisfy you any longer on this earth. You need to expose the captivity of their sins. The sins which begin in your heart. By saying disobeying to Lord's mind and Lord's procedure, those who don't follow the great step of the Lord's mind, which He has delineated for us, the only unique rule in this church age, those who don't look upon such following methods of the church age, they have really. not taken into their mind what is this great calling in the church age therefore they go for cheap substitutes they love to be along with their boyfriends but they don't want to be with their legally wedded husband but get the whole spirit their boyfriends are not of truth Therefore, they who are of not of truth will hear not. The truth says 1 John 4, 5. But they are of the truth says John 8, 12. And 8, 47 as well. Will love to listen and to tell them nothing but the truth. And those who truly fear my Lord by the loving procedure of the Lord's mind, they will certainly love the truth and become a fearful obedience to the Lord's mind day by day and they will be having the burden to look more and more diligently from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 with the proper exegesis isagogues and categories of the church age and the good book which our Lord of God begins in you it is you who shall see it will reach its perfection completion the people never realize what is the perfection what is that completion and yet the people who love to grab from them besides grabbing this true spiritual life and destroying their life in the Lord's will they also destroy them financially by begging them to give tithes if ever it is Lord's will, it has to stand with Lord's glory. 
Teach them, train them up to become the disciples of the Lord's mind. And not to grab your money to construct your churches, not to grab your money to fulfill your lusts, not to grab your money to say, in the year when I began the ministry, I had only a bicycle, but after 10 years, Lord blessed me with four cars so that you can roam around the city in four cars. It's as good as saying that I will wear four underwears once a time, or inner wears. Can you wear four inner wears at a time? Are you not sufficient and happy with one inner wear what you wear? Or the bikini style what you can call for you? What you will do if you have four cars? Sell the three, keep one, which is of a best one for you. Use the remaining three for the missionary work. Many people are not known the truth. Many people haven't understood the truth. Train them up. It's not your for your great abundance of your proud talk to say, the Lord has blessed me with four cars. Throw it out. That's not possible. That's not allowed. That's not the right mind of thinking in the Lord's will. That's pride of life. Don't show that to the other believers to say, if you come to my church, you will be blessed in that manner. The things of this earth have been minded by the people of this earth. But we are not of this earth, we are of heavenly citizens in the Lord's glory. If ever you think your testimony should be, you should say, I began my ministry by reading daily one verse upon my knees. But now I'm able to read four or five chapters. I finished reading Bible upon my knees. And now I'm writing Bible upon my knees. That should be a great testimony for you, rather than having a testimony for you in the terms of these people, what they think it's a testimony, by telling, Lord has blessed me with four cars. Your material growth will go back to the dust. Your inner man goes back to the Lord of a God. And if you have not ordained or certainly decorated your inner man with the Lord's will, with the Lord's mind, with the Lord's glory, then you have lost it. No matter how great you think you are, no matter how great you are performing the deeds you think you are, you have lost it, dear brother. Don't worry. You may be pleased with the so-called fellow believers who could really appreciate your thinking. But now you'll be pleased in the presence of the Lord of a God for what He has chosen you on this earth. And many people are not interested to look. As Apostle Paul tells for us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, to make us to realize the people will not endure sound Bible doctrine. It is in the terms of their own calling. They are proving that they are not worthy to be counted off. And these people are thinking by itching ears, seeking those pastors for them who could feed them with their own selfish life of activities. They are pleasing our Lord. Christ our Lord God the Father values righteousness rather than your methods of thinking of offerings. He demands us to take into consideration the sound calling in the law. He demands us into consideration whether you believe it or not, dear brethren, to endure in sound Bible doctrine that's your life. He calls for you to realize what a great purpose we are going through in this earth. By ending
enduring sound Bible doctrine, preaching in season and out of season, being prepared, prepared, prepared. The manifestation of the sons, of the adult sons of Lord our God on this earth to be shown. would be when we are coming to show in the Lord's grace, in the Lord's glory, that true calling in the Lord. Being prepared. And yet, there are many men on this earth who don't love to come every day to the Bible class don't come to look and have that fellowship of three hours with my Christ every day. Who don't consider that their life is a living sacrifice to the Lord's will and to the Lord's glory. Who never realize, no matter whether it shine or rain, every day their burden is to pay to the Lord's will, the Lord's glory. And never they will understand this true fellowship in the Lord's will which is so glorious and wonderful demanding in us his work and never they will realize if they lose this time of this unique privileged spiritual life they would love to be regretting all the time being a true believer, they have been saved, but being not into the reality of the Lord's mind, to gain their rewards, they have been lost. They will be losing their rewards forever. This great grace which has been bestowed upon us day by day to understand and to wake up to the Lord's mind has been used in vain, laboring in vain, running in vain. Holding forth the word of life in our hands, looking upon the great demonstration of power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, when we walk in truth, abide in truth, honor his word by truth. Our purpose is far greater and far, far, far higher than any mind of man can conceive by not believing in Christ. The power of Dunamis, the great Lord God of peace, by the power of Dunamis of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, acting in us, working in us, so that we could stand for His glory. And that great power of Dunamis calls with the exusive authority given to us to pull down those highest imaginations that go against the Lord's will and put them to the Lord's glory every time. Dear brethren, you haven't truly understood the true calling in the Lord. You haven't loved my Lord in sincerity that is required for the Lord's glory all the time. You have been constantly in every mannerism of your calling. Yet our Lord our God comes in grace so that today at least you shall know his will. So that today at least you will wake up to the calling in the Lord's mind. But yet, the lustful patterns of the old sin nature, constantly calling to grim and squelch and light to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, have changed to such kind of a great extension in your thinking that you would love to say, who is Christ? By the spirit of errors, the already many antichrists who are mentored, anti instead of Christ, 
platform entered into our pulpits by the entertaining methods, becoming clowns, infidels and morons, going from kleptes, lestes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, sharuras and hupnas. Alogazwans, brute beasts, and we are having antilogian methods, which are not according to the Lord's mind. Antilogian methods. We we'll become Lucas, proud, and they say, "Who is going to heed for one hour every day? Who is going to come to teach one hour every day? No problem." All these men who are coming into our pulpit, who are entertaining you. For the time on this earth it may be joyful for you, but you have called not to be joyful on this earth, but to suffer for his sake, living as the footsteps of him, saith Apostle Peter, that we also should walk in the suffering what he has intended for us, not the vicarious sufferings of Christ our Lord. Even the same thing what Colossians 124 calls for us. At least from my part to pay the role of the Lord's suffering. We are not talking about the vicarious sufferings of the Lord's glory. The mental agony of my Lord. Which he has gone through because he knew after 33 years of his age. After his being crucifixion, resurrection and ascension. The great mental agony pain for the church to renovate your standards of thinking, to put in you the mind of Christ. That great mental agony, where he says in Colossians 124, I have to pay to the path to the role. Likewise, when you are suffering for Christ, is to renovate the standards of your thinking from this human viewpoint and put in the divine viewpoint and transform yourself. And by the time in metamorphomai, the inner standards of your thinking, not metaschematizoans. Transform your mind into that reality. And that transformation is what many people don't realize today in our pulpit. That's the suffering for Christ. Your material blessings are now far greater when you can compare to the blessings of these unbelievers. But what is the difference? You have Christ and they don't have Christ in them. If you have Christ, he is a God of peace, he is a God of hope. Though Isaiah tells Prince of Peace, but the Bible says for us in Romans, he is a God of peace. The Prince will be like that Nagad, what we have read in Ezekiel 28.3. And the king will be like the way how it could be in Ezekiel 28, 11 and following. So here in the Old Testament, it would be revealed for them that he is like that Nagad, Prince of Peace. Malak or King of Peace. But in the New Testament, he has been said he is Theos. He is Lord God of Peace. The originator of peace, the source of peace, the life in peace. And besides that, he is Lord God of hope. Do you know what a great privilege it is to be such a great Lord of a God for us? When the world is running to seek peace, the world is running to seek joy. But we, the believers, by default, have been given that great joy, that great peace in Christ. Because he is our God, and he is a God of peace, he is a God of joy, he is a God of eternal life. And that great Lord of our God says for us to realize our calling in Christ and tells for us to continue with the calling wherewith he has called us. It demands for us to understand, to make number one priority all the time for his doctrine, for his mind, for his commandments. The church age believers will never realize that until and unless they go back into heaven and understand how much of the great value of teachings were been given for us. The things that have been revealed for us on this earth which belong only to us. And how could we let it go so easily? 
because of this, because of your father, because of your mother, because of your wife, because of your children. You let it go to some useless, worthless thinking, which will not benefit you apart from the gratification of your emotions and compassions in your soul, for your bellies, making your belly to be a god. for a time today for me to eat the physical food is far greater and to have the physical luxuries is so greater so I will change the word of the Lord of God to a lie professing to be wise but you have become fools and you haven't understood that how much you're paying to my Lord that which should be for the glory of the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ you will certainly reap you will reap what you sow now if you sow to the Spirit, by daily growing up in the Lord's mind, you will reap the glory of the fruit of the Spirit. Not only now, even in the earth, even in the heaven. Because we are not listed to look only the things of this earth. But we have been called to look the things of the heaven for the great glory of the Lord's mind on this earth. Such many people who have been there or here looking the false scales of values, giving false priorities in their values and in their thinking, they have led into astray that which is of truth in the church. They have thought it could be happy by giving number one priority for lies rather than truth. And they are very, very happy enough not to realize their future state. If you would look your future state, says Second Peter 3 verses, Laman and following, wherein only dwelleth righteousness. On this earth, these people would have let go all mannerism of unrighteousness, including their ignorance, not to come to Bible class every day all mannerisms of righteousness which reigns over to tell to leave behind those things which are of the flesh because you are no longer slaves to the flesh but you are now slaves to the spirit slaves to the righteousness of the Lord's mind and yet you say how is it possible for us? Because you have been stuck up in the mud and not rooted in Christ. And these great people love to have still their blessings in terms of material but never any longer in the blessings of the Lord's mind. The introduction for us to redeem the moments of night because of the failure of the pastor teachers to teach them to meditate upon the Lord's mind day and night. Dear brethren, think about these issues. Life is too short. The calling in the Lord's mind for us in the church age is too large. It demands moment by moment, breath by breath, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be absolutely holy and get separated to the Lord's will forever. It demands His calling in our lives to be for the Father's greatest extension. Wherewith you may just think you are a heavenly citizen, but you are called to be like Christ far above than the heavenly citizen on this earth. Because as God the Father sent, Christ our Lord our God for our sake on this earth, Christ our Father in heaven, now they are sending you and me to this earth to be witnesses for his truth. And how many days more you don't realize these teachings, Lord help you. But the greater your time that you spend to the Lord's will and to the Lord's glory, it's a great blessing for you to wake up to such calling in the Lord. And if you don't realize these teachings, 
it is upon your own fate always grace comes before judgment and this is great what grace what we are proclaiming for you every day scrutinizing for you to realize identity in the lord's mind from the original isagogic categories and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations with the right intentions of the lord's glory for you in him in his will in his divine holy will so that everyone should be to the praise of his glory in his grace the vessels of honor we have to be sanctified and kept apart to the lord's mind and why we want to end it up in the glory of this earth not even worthy to be counted even the souls if we walk like christ on this earth they are also not even worthy to be counted before the great presence of his glory where the word of the lord of god calls for us that eternal weight of glory the kairos moments what we have been going through on this earth is nothing that sufferings of your worth before that great glory of the lord's mind dear brother and think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow back in my native today there is some huge wind if it is possible for you all to go through and continue or let it to continue to listen we shall come back and continue tomorrow at my home with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life in order to telling to lord god the father that you live upon my christ my lord my rock my savior my salvation that is the most sufficient and eternal truth it's eternal truth for us so very simple believing christ you shall be saved Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to care us upon Lagan and call the word in season and out of season, because of the amount of my witnesses where we have been called. And I'm bound to amount to my witnesses in well infinity, for all the Bible in our hands, and I'm bound to amount to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry about such nature, the entire angels cost you by witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is right to rightly divide the word of the Lord of the Lord. No matter how about the chips may fall. So dear brother, don't think about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, once again coming to thy grace, we are grateful for this great privilege which you have given to us. So that, Lord, we could grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, realizing what is our worth for which you have chosen us. Redeeming the times of the night as well to the praise of thy glory in your grace. So that, Lord, we could truly understand why we should waste not our time on this earth, but in return pay the kairos moments of our suffering. And that kairos moments of our suffering, compared to that great eternal light of glory, is nothing. Help us to rightly do it in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, O Lord, as long as we have breath in our nostrils. In Christ's name we pray, sovereign Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these storms. Amen.